Fred, when we talk about time travel, wormholes where you can go from one part of the universe to the other part of the universe without really traveling, uh, populate our science fiction. We all like to read about it. It's fun. I mean, I love it too. Uh, but some very serious physicists look at these uh, as as possibilities to explore the, the frontiers of physics. Uh, from your work in quantum mechanics, uh, is there any real possibility to time travel, wormholes, and all that exotic stuff? Well, uh, it's always possible to time travel if you can find a wormhole and if you can find some exotic matter which has negative pressure, which will keep the darn thing open long enough for you to slip through. Yes, of course. Uh, Kip Thorne has come up with some interesting solutions designing that kind of a thing. Uh, way back in the 1930s and is current and, 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 and carried through into the 1970s, uh, uh, W. J. Van Stockham and then Frank Tipler, uh, designed, uh, came up with an idea of, of how you don't need, even need a wormhole. If you just have enough compact material and a certain geometry, it's possible to find time travel trajectories which loop around this particular geometry so that you can go around in circles, literally around the thing, which is very dense and maybe neutron starish like, and end up right back where you started from, with the same time that you started from. So it seems to be that right now in theoretical physics and in terms of what Einstein's equations tell us, anything is possible. Uh, all of these causality violations seem to be quite real. There are conditions that people have developed uh, about energy and exotic matter and so forth, but it seems to be that it is and a fundamental aspect, if we believe relativity theory to be true, of what is possible. Do you uh, see any uh, additional aspects uh, added into this in terms of uh, uh, some sort of a non-physical world or a consciousness world? Do you, do you add that in? If we, we just leave the physical world alone, I think we've described it, you've described it, others have as well, the, the, the remote possibility under certain extreme conditions. But I, is there any, any, any other way you can uh, affect the same result? I believe that the mind, that the mind, the subspace-time realm out of which I believe matter comes into being, according to my understanding of quantum physics, that that realm is a spaceless, timeless realm, which means that it's like, in a sense, a place where closed time-like paths can emerge. So it seems to me that the mind itself has something in its nature, which is time travel -y. I don't know how to quite find the language to, to describe it. What I think is going on is that the mind is constructing our temporal experience. We have an objective sense of time, certainly. The sun rises, the sun sets. We all agree about that. We have an idea of what that means. But subjective time, which is very much like objective time, but is it really? No, it's not. Uh, if you're on a hot date, <laughs> I mean, one hour can feel like five minutes. It ain't enough time. Right, right. And if you're on a horrible date, uh, <laughs> one minute can feel like five hours. I mean, so there's a relativity. There's a, a, a about time. When you're uh, having an accident and something happens to you and things rush by very, very quickly, it's like time slows down for you. Now, there are good psychological reasons why that occurs in our normal life, but can you infer from that that there is a, a, a time dimension to a deeper consciousness that has, I, that has a different reality? I think so. And this is where I am speculating, and this is very far out stuff, so please let me do it. I believe that every time there's a conscious experience, we're creating a sequence so that the next conscious, experience, next conscious experience and the one following it for a personal conscious experience, that that sequence implies what I would call normal time order if it goes from more probable to less probable. But if it goes from less probable to more probable, it's actually going backwards in time. So what I'm saying from this, this is a speculation. I can't, I can't prove this, but in my speculative thinking, 
This is what we do when we practice, for example, yoga, or when we learn something new, or when we forget something. In order to do something new, we have to use this process of going backwards and forwards in time, not, sub not objective time. I'm not talking about changing the world time. I'm talking about the internal clock, your subjective time sense, that that's where but, this but, is. But that, that's an internal psychological process. I mean, we, we all un understand that, that, that uh, our sense of time is, is, uh, is very different in different experiences. But that, that can sometimes be very out of whack with objective time in the real world. I'm ah. talking about, is there a deeper uh, reality as you see consciousness being more fundamental that can uh, access objective time in different ways? Well, objective time is a time that we agree as objective time. Relativity theory tells us that it's not absolute, right. for one thing. Right, sure. So why should, what, which objective time am I trying to get to, so to speak? It's not, a, it's not, a, there is no such thing. So I think objective time is not the place to try to emulate or reach for. I think the thing to do is to look at the fundamental way in which we construct time. And I think that is, that is where what I was just speculating about has some bearing. That sequences can be ordered. And if they're ordered going from more probable to less probable, that gives a direction to time. What's an example of that? Well, for example, let's say that uh, you're learning to ride a bicycle. And you get on the bicycle, there are many possibilities. Mm -hmm. And as you learn and ride, these possibilities get limited. So as you become more expert at riding, finally, there's only one way of doing it. You, you would never think of leaning to the right or to the left or turning the wheel that way as you did when you first were trying to ride the bicycle. So and this is as you master, as you become cognizant of a, of a pattern or a habit, I would call this constructing of a movement forward through time, an evolutionary pattern. Whereas on the other hand, when you try to let go of something, when you're trying, for example, you're trying to learn a new position or, try, or remember lines in a the theater, you have to let go of your old ways of being. And if you don't do that, if you don't go into more probable possibilities, you'll never become a good actor. So all good actors learn to let go of the previous scene. So, but, but these, again, are, 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 are psychological time. And, and is there anything we can learn about objective time? Because when we're talking about, about time travel and wormholes, and, and, I mean, that's talking about moving in objective time. We're th that's talking about objective time, but again, I caution that object. You know, why should we try to worry about changing objective time? Because objective time for us is only our point of view.